We are continuing now our series on the Champion Life uh, series. So, well, last week we talked about the spirit of a champion. We learned the greatest champion is Jesus, our Lord. And when he, was, uh, when he is in our lives, we can also live a champion life. Now, we also learned the characteristic to have the spirit of a champion. I trust that you are applying them in your life. Today, I want to talk to you about the sacrifice of a champion. Friends, sacrifice is an important ingredient in a life of a champion. It is part of the equation in order to succeed. Champions understand that if they want to accomplish great things in life, they must be willing to make some sacrifices. Now, Adoniram Judson, an American missionary who spent 32 years in Burma, said this, there is no success without sacrifice. If you succeed without sacrifice, it is because someone has suffered before you. If you sacrifice without success, it is because someone will succeed after. Well, there is truth to the saying, no pain, no gain, or no sacrifice, no glory. Many people want the end result, the glory, the success, but they are not willing to go through the process. Only a few, the champions, who are willing to go through what it takes to succeed. If we want to win in life, there are things that we must be willing to give up in order to gain. Let me share with you some of those things. The first is the sacrifice of comfort. Champions understand that in order to pursue the great things that are ahead of them, they must be willing to give up some comforts of life. Champions are willing to go out of their comfort zone in order to get ahead. People who are not willing to get out of their comfort zone cannot achieve great things. Why? Because you don't grow in comfort. The Bible says in James 1, verse 2 to 4, Consider it pure joy, my brothers, whenever you face trials of many kinds, whether you know that the testing of your faith develops perseverance. Perseverance must finish its work so that you may mature, you may be mature and complete, not lacking anything. Friends, growth takes pain. Athletes understand that they must train hard and long to get good at what they do. Bodybuilders push themselves past the pain to build their muscles. Students know that they have to spend long hours and some sleepless night to get good grades. Champions overcome their discomforts to succeed. The Bible tells us of a champion for God by the name of Abraham. Genesis chapter 12 verse 1 says this, The Lord had said to Abram, Leave your country, your people, and your father's household, and go to the land I will show you. Abraham left his country, his people, and his father's household to pursue the plan of God. He had to leave his comfortable situation where he knew everyone, uh, where he had stability and security. It must have been an uncomfortable move, especially not knowing where God would lead him. Friends, sometimes our comfort, our comfort hinders us from growing. Paul was the greatest apostle that ever lived, a champion. But here's what he had to say. In 2 Corinthians 11, verse 27 to 28, it says, I have labored and toiled and have often gone without sleep. I have known hunger and thirst and have often gone without food. I have been cold and naked. Besides everything else, I face daily the pressure of my concern for all the churches. You know, it's a shame when we complain about our discomforts as Christians, especially here in North America or first world countries. We can't go to church or a life group when it's too hot or too cold or too much traffic. We can't serve because we are too tired. We have become so comfortable. But great accomplishments come from sacrificing our comforts. Are you willing to make some sacrifices? If you want to be a champion in life, you need to be willing to give up. See, a musician or singer takes time to practice. While their friends are having a good time, they're practicing. A leader takes time to attend training and seminars. 
while others are watching TV, they are learning. A person who wants to grow spiritually takes time to learn by attending the church activities and Bible studies and serving. While their friends are out shopping, they're busy developing themselves. Sacrificing our comforts allows us to grow in our faith. You can't increase in your faith when everything is comfortable and easy. Your faith is tested in the discomfort. 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 6 to 7 says this. In this you greatly rejoice, though now for a little while you may have had to suffer grief in all kinds of trials. These have come so that your faith of greater worth than gold, which perishes even though refined by fire, may be proved genuine and may result in praise, glory, and honor when Jesus Christ is revealed. The Bible teaches us that the trials and sufferings, the discomforts of life come to test our faith that it is genuine. How can you prove that you have faith or not? It's not when the things are going smooth and everything is easy and just comfortable. It's easy to have faith in that situation. No, our faith is tested through the fire. When things are not easy, when things are not comfortable, that's why you need to rejoice when you go through trials because it is not permanent. It's only for a little while. But when you go through it, it will result in praise and give glory and honor to God and to the Lord Jesus Christ. See, that's the sacrifice of a champion. Let me share with you what the Apostle Paul had to go through. In 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 23 to 28, it says this. Are they servants of Christ? I'm out of my mind to talk like this. I am more. I have worked much harder, been in prison more frequently, been flogged more severely, and been exposed to death again and again. Five times I received from the Jews the 40 lashes minus one. Three times I was beaten with rods. Once I was pelted with stones. Three times I was shipwrecked. I spent a night and a day in the open sea. I have been constantly on the move. I have been in danger from rivers, in danger from bandits, in danger from fellow Jews, in danger from Gentiles, in danger in the city, in danger in the country, in danger at sea, and in danger from false believers. I have labored and toiled and have often gone without sleep. I have known hunger and thirst and have often gone without food. I have been cold and naked. Besides everything else, I face daily the pressure of my concern for all the churches. Now, does that sound like comfortable to you? See, that's what makes him a champion. So what discomforts are you experiencing right now as you pursue your God-given dream? Learn to sacrifice comfort. When faced with uncomfortable situations, we have two choices. We leave our comfort zone and grow or move back into safety. Well, look at it as an opportunity for you to be a champion. Well, the second sacrifice is a sacrifice of reputation. I'm not talking about something to destroy your reputation. I'm talking about pursuing your purpose even at the expense of your reputation. Let's face it, when you pursue great things, people will look for something to pull you down. Champions pursue their God-given dreams and goals and even put their reputation on the line. They don't care what others think. Noah was a champion. When he heard from God to build an ark, he left the comfort of his day-to-day -day routine and began building an enormous ark. His reputation was on the line, being a righteous man. And Jesus said this about Noah's time. In Luke chapter 17, verse 27, says this. People were eating, drinking, marrying, and being given in marriage up to the day Noah entered the ark. Then the flood came and destroyed them all. People must have made fun of him building an ark when there was no rain. But no one knew that he heard from God and he will accomplish the task in spite 
of what people say about him. You know, the Apostle Paul was a champion. He was a Pharisee, educated and studied under Gamaliel, uh, thoroughly trained in the law. He had a reputation for being the best at what he did. But he sacrificed his reputation to obey God and pursue his calling. He risked his life fulfilling God's will in his life. Listen to what he says in Philippians chapter 3, verse 4 to 9. If someone else thinks they have reason to put confidence in the flesh, I have more. Circumcised on the eighth day of the people of Israel, of the tribe of Benjamin, a Hebrew of Hebrews, in regard to the law, a Pharisee. As for zeal, persecuting the church. As for righteousness based on the law, faultless. But whatever were gains to me, I now consider loss for the sake of Christ. What is more, I consider everything a loss because of the surpassing worth of knowing Jesus Christ, Christ Jesus, my Lord, for whose sake I have lost all things. I consider them garbage that I may gain Christ and, may be, and be found in Him, not having a righteousness of my own that comes from the law, but that which is through faith in Christ, the righteousness that comes from God on the basis of faith. Now, this was a man that was shipwrecked, beaten, imprisoned, and eventually killed for his vision. He sacrificed his reputation to fulfill his God-given calling. How about the greatest champion, Jesus? Well, Jesus risked his reputation for our sake. He left the comfort of heaven and walked as a man. He was sinless and did nothing wrong. But he was mocked, he was insulted, he was mistreated. But that didn't stop him from accomplishing his purpose. Now, 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 22 to 23 says this. He committed no sin and no deceit was found in his mouth. When they hurled their insults at him, he did not retaliate. When he suffered, he made no threats. Instead, he entrusted himself to him who judges justly jesus did not allow those things to stop him from accomplishing the task that god the father gave him champions are willing to sacrifice the reputation for the greater cause what reputation are you protecting at work in school or in your community are you willing to give up uh, for, for uh, all of that for a greater cause don't allow your reputation with your friends and family to stop you from fulfilling your God-given purpose. You know, when, when I was young and, and single, I felt the call to give my life to God and serve Him. And I remember my family who didn't understand then was mocking me for my faith. They made fun of me. Eventually, I left the business world, got married and started a family and Served God full time with no money. My friends and family felt I was crazy. And throughout my journey, I was persecuted, accused, kicked out of the family, verbally abused, and even threatened. Now, needless to say, my reputation was smeared. But that didn't stop Elvie, my wife, and I to continue to fulfill our calling. Now, friends, today... We are stronger than we've ever been, and our faith is proven to be genuine. Now, we are not finished yet, but we pray that our lives may bring glory and honor to God. Friends, to be a champion, it will cost your worldly reputation. There are sacrifices to be made. Begin today to make the sacrifices necessary so you can achieve the great things God has in store for you. As you pursue your dream, people may say things about you and try to ruin your reputation. But remember that the only reputation worth keeping is to be a true son or daughter of God. At the end of the day, when all is said and done, all your certificates, medals, and trophies will not matter. The only thing that will matter is that you walked with God and He is pleased with your life. 
So declare that with me. I am a champion. Go ahead. Just begin to declare that in your life. I am a champion. I am a champion. Amen. Well, the third sacrifice is a sacrifice of possession. Now, friends, champions understand that it may be necessary to give up some possessions in order to accomplish their goals. Abraham was challenged by God to give up his only son. After finally receiving the promise of having a son, now he's being asked to sacrifice him. We find in Genesis 22 verse 2 says, Then God said, Take your son, your only son, Isaac, whom you love, and go to the region of Moriah. Sacrifice him there as a burnt offering on one of the mountains I will tell you about. Now, it must have been hard for Abraham just like any father, especially the fact that Isaac was the promised one, his only son that he loved. Yet Abraham was willing to part with his possession in order to obey God. What is the greatest possession that you have that is dear to you? Are you willing to part with it? We all know the story. It ended up that God provided a ram for sacrifice and his son Isaac was spared. The principle is his possession did not hinder him from fulfilling God's plan. On the other hand, Jesus talked about the young man. We find in the Gospel of Matthew 19, verse 21 to 22. Jesus answered, If you want to be perfect, go sell your possessions and give to the poor, and you will have treasure in heaven. Then come, follow me. When the young man heard this, he went away sad because he had great wealth. He was not willing to sacrifice his possessions. In this case, his wealth. For the most important thing, which was his relationship with Christ. And Jesus gives us this warning in Luke chapter 12, verse 15 to 21. When he said to them, watch out. Be on your guard against all kinds of greed. A man's life does not consist in the abundance of his possessions. And he told them this parable. The ground of a certain rich man produced a good crop. He thought to himself, what shall I do? I have no place to store my crops. Then he said, this is what I'll do. I will tear down my barns and build bigger ones. And there I will store all my grain and my goods. And I'll say to myself, you have plenty of good things laid up for many years. Take life easy, eat, drink, and be merry. But God said to him, you fool, this very night your life will be demanded from you. Then who will get what you have prepared for yourself? This is how it will be with anyone who stores up things for himself, but is not rich toward God. Uh, Jesus shows us that the true champions understand that life is not just accumulating wealth, but being rich toward God. Life does not consist in the abundance of possessions. We must not allow possessions to hinder us from the higher purposes of God. So what is your greatest possession? Some of you may answer house, car, jewelry, your investments, piece of uh, uh, art on the wall, or even your family. But friends, your greatest possession is the life God has given you. Are you willing to sacrifice your life for a greater cause? I'm not talking about suicide. All right, now let me turn to uh, Matthew chapter 16, verse 24 to 26. Then Jesus said to his disciples, If anyone would come after me, he must deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. For whoever wants to save his life will lose it. But whoever loses his life for me will find it. What good will it be for a man if he gains the whole world yet forfeits his soul? Or what can a man give in exchange for his soul? You know, Jesus was talking about giving up the desire for worldly gain in order to follow him. He says we must learn to deny ourselves and take up our cross and make the sacrifice and follow him. Because we may have all this worldly possession, but lose our life. And Jesus promises that we will actually have a life in him. Now, here's an important observation. 
sometimes the greatest hindrance is you. Not your friend, not your spouse, not your parents, not your children, not your friend, not your pastor, but you. Are you willing to give up your fleshly desires so that God can use you and give you an abundant life? Don't be like the rich man who walked away from Jesus because he had great wealth. He didn't understand that a relationship with Christ is more important than his possessions. Instead, don't allow your possessions and the desire for them hinder you from the greater things that God wants to give you. Champions are willing to sacrifice their possessions. Amen. Now, I want you to declare that. I am a champion. Go ahead. I am a champion. So, friends, champions are prepared to sacrifice to win. You may say, Pastor, I don't think I can sacrifice like that. I want to encourage you this uh, today that the greatest sacrifice ever to be given was already done. Jesus Christ died for you and me and was the ultimate and perfect sacrifice so that you and I can be forgiven. Jesus sacrificed the comfort of heaven uh, to come and live as a man. He sacrificed his reputation as God, sacrificed his possession as the owner of all things, just so that you and I can have an eternal and abundant life, a champion life. You know, a British missionary to Africa in the 1800s, David Livingstone, who was considered a national hero, he said this, People talk of the sacrifice I have made in spending so much of my life in Africa. Can that be called a sacrifice which is simply acknowledging a great debt we owe to our God which we can never repay? Is that a sacrifice which brings its own reward in healthful activity, the consciousness of doing good, peace of mind, and a bright hope of a glorious destiny? It is emphatically no sacrifice. Rather, it is a privilege. Anxiety, sickness, suffering, danger, foregoing the common conveniences of this life, this may make us pause and cause the spirit to waver and the soul to think. But let this only be for a moment. All these are nothing compared with the glory which shall later be revealed in and through us. I never made a sacrifice. Of this we ought not to walk, to talk. When we remember the great sacrifice which he made, who left his father's throne on high to give himself for us. Friends, you can be a champion when you accept the greatest sacrifice. With Christ, you are able to make the sacrifice necessary to be a champion in life. He empowers you to sacrifice your comfort. He empowers you to sacrifice your reputation. He empowers you to sacrifice your possession so that you can be a champion. You receive that today? Well, give, an, give me an amen. Put it on the chat, all right? Go ahead, say amen. Praise the Lord. And for those of you watching us here today, I would like to give you an opportunity to receive Jesus in your life. So that he can be, uh, he, that that he can give you a champion life. Pray this prayer with me. For for now, I want you to just uh, follow and uh, pray with me. Lord Jesus, I confess that I have gone in my own way. I have sinned against you. Thank you for your sacrifice for me. I repent of my sin and ask you to come into my life be my Lord and Savior, and I will follow you all the days of my life. Amen. Friends, if you have prayed that prayer, please let us know. Put it in the chat, and our team is standing by to walk with you in your next steps. Or send us a note through any of our contact information. Friends, well, our time is up. Let me pray a blessing over you. Let us pray. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord shine his face upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord lift up his countenance on you and give you his peace. May he cause you to walk under an open heaven. 
May it cause you to prosper in every area of your life, even as your soul prospers. May you open doors of opportunities for you that you can enter in and be victorious for God. May he continue to fill you with His love, grace, and the power of His Spirit throughout this week and until He comes. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Well, friends, thanks for being with us today. See you again next week. God bless. Thank you for watching today's celebration. If you have committed your life to Christ today, we have a special gift for you. Please send us a note by visiting our website at championlife.ca and select contact. You can also send out your prayer requests or call us by phone. And remember, you can give your online tithes and offering through our website, text to give, use the Champion Life Center app, or e-transfer. Just make sure to select the location that you are giving to. Please join our Connect Lounge after the celebration. Link can be found on our Facebook page. And lastly, don't forget to follow us on our social media pages. This is the best way to stay updated and engage with our Champion Life community. And we want to stay connected with you. We are so glad that you have joined us and we hope to see you online next Sunday. God bless you. There's nothing worth more that could ever come close. Nothing can compare your outliving